Hey everyone, uh, so this problem was uh, a request from one of uh, you guys, so let me go ahead and work through it. So we're going to do it using the definition of a limit. So before we do it, let me recall what it means for a sequence to converge to L. So we say that the limit of x sub n as n approaches infinity is equal to L. This means that for every epsilon greater than zero, no matter how small, we can find uh, some positive integer. So there exists, that's what the backwards E means, an N in the set of positive integers such that whenever little n is bigger than capital N, so for all little n bigger than capital N, we have that the distance between x sub n and L is smaller than epsilon. So that's the uh, precise definition of a limit or the definition of a limit uh, for sequences. So to prove this problem, um, we're going to use this definition. So first we're going to figure out the proof. So first we're going to do the scratch work. And then we'll formally go through and work through the proof. So when we're doing our proof, we get to assume this piece here. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that would mean that for all epsilon greater than zero, we can find some positive integer etc. And the important part is that the distance between x sub n and 2, we can make this less than epsilon. We have this for any epsilon. So what we need, what we need is we need the distance between this and 1 to be less than epsilon. So we write it down. So 2 x sub n minus 1 over 3 minus 1. And we want this to be less than epsilon. So the natural thing to do here is to actually perform the subtraction, right? This 1 here can be written as 3 over 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is 2 x sub n minus 1 over 3 minus 3 over 3. And now the denominators are the same, right? So we can write this as 2 x sub n. And then minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4. And it's all over 3. And we can make this. We want this to be less than epsilon. And now it might be a little more clear what's going to happen. So you can pull out a 2 here from the numerator. So you get 2 thirds. You can pull out both, the 3 on the bottom and the 2 on the top. And you get x sub n minus 2. And we want this to be less than epsilon. And now here you see we have x sub n minus 2 less than epsilon. So we want to match it. So basically now we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So 3 halves, 3 halves. Boom, there it is. So we get the distance between x sub n and 2 less than 3 halves epsilon. All right, this is going to be our epsilon in our proof. This is going to be our epsilon in the proof. Okay, so now let's go ahead and write the proof, and you'll see exactly what I mean. It's a really, really cool problem. Okay, so let me switch colors here and go to green, so proof. So we start, our, we start our proof by assuming that this sequence converges to 2. So I'll write it again. Just to, Let's do a formal proof. So suppose that the limit as n approaches infinity of x sub n is equal to 2. Okay, that's what we assume. Now we have to prove that this other sequence here is equal to 1. Okay, so to start that, we have to start by letting epsilon be greater than 0, right? So we have to write that down. So let epsilon be greater than 0. Now we have to find uh, n, right? It says there exists an n in the set of positive integers such that all of this stuff is true. Well, the n is going to come from, from this assumption. So since, so since the limit as n approaches infinity of x sub n is equal to 2, right? There exists a positive integer n such that we can make the distance between x sub n and 2 small. Well, how small do we want it? Well, we know from our scratch work that it has to be smaller than 3 halves epsilon, right? So we wouldn't know this if we hadn't gone through all of the scratch work, right? That's the part that's often missing in textbooks, right? Is how to come up with the proof, right? That's actually the hard part. All right. And so now we just have to show that the distance between, let me go back up so you see it, the distance between 2x sub n minus 1 over 3 and 1 is less than epsilon. So we're basically going to repeat all of these steps, but in a more formal fashion. Okay, so then, let's be pro about it. Let's start by mentioning, for all little n bigger than n, right, that was part of the definition. Let me go back up so you can see it. See, that was 
part of the definition, right? So we for all epsilon, so we did that here, let epsilon be greater than zero. We, we're showing the existence of an n. We're doing that here, okay? And then now we're saying for all little n bigger than n, and then we just have to show this, and we've satisfied the definition completely. All right, so we have the 2x sub n minus 1 over 3 minus 1. And we want this to be less than epsilon, but we can't put less than epsilon, right? We have to show it. So let's just keep going. So this is equal to 2x sub n minus 1 over 3 minus 3 over 3. Same as before. Then we subtract. So 2x sub n minus 4 over 3. These are all the qualities, right? All of this is equal. We're just repeating what we did uh, up here, okay? Let me come down another line so you see it. This is equal to, now we're going to pull out the 2 up top. So it'll be 2 over 3. You can pull out the 3 from the bottom as well. And you get x sub n minus 2. And here's where the magic happens. We know that this is less than 3 halves epsilon. So the 2 thirds hangs out. And we get to replace this piece here with 3 halves epsilon. Beautiful stuff. The 3's cancel, the 2's cancel, and you just get epsilon. So epsilon here was arbitrary, so we let epsilon be greater than 0. We found our n such that for all little n bigger than capital N, the distance between our sequence and 1 is less than epsilon. That's precisely what we had to show, so the proof is done. I hope this video has been helpful, and uh, thanks for the email. Cool problem. Uh, that's it.